So when it comes to designing products, it's always important for companies to put the customer at the center of that process. And so I'm excited to be here and talk to Salesforce's Jenny Sachs, who is a Senior Director of Customer and Product Insights. Customer and Market Insights. Customer and Market Insights. Yes. And so we're going to talk about idea exchange. Yes. So tell me a little bit about your role in developing idea exchange. Yeah. What idea exchange is and then we'll talk about maybe what you're going to be doing with idea exchange in the future. Yeah, well thank you so much for having me. Uh, so Customer Market Insights is really just a fancy way of saying voice of the customer. So my entire job is to listen to our customers, to the market, to make sure that we are bringing all of that information into how we make decisions. So the goal is to give a customer a seat at the table in every decision, big and small. Uh, one of the big ways that we listen is the Salesforce ID Exchange, which launched 12 years ago. And the vision for it was pretty simple. We wanted a way for our customers to tell us what they wanted to see in the product. So anybody with a Salesforce login could come to the site, could say, here's what I want to see, and the community would crowdsource votes. And so over time, we got a sense of what was most important to our community by watching how voting changed, how ideas were logged. Uh, but, there's always a but in these stories, <laughs> um, we saw a massive amount of growth. So we went from, you know, Salesforce was smaller 12 years ago. We're now big, thankfully. Uh, and we now had 65,000 ideas logged. We have hundreds of product managers. Hundreds of thousands of customers have been added to our ecosystem. And so over the years, we've really struggled to scale that experience. So the last year has really been, how do we reimagine the idea exchange to allow our community to have more of that dialogue about our roadmap and where we're going and to really see how they're influencing and shaping Salesforce. You know, that's something that's, I know, been a little bit of a criticism. Yeah. Um, whenever any company, not just Salesforce, puts a program like this out there, people who are providing ideas back in, you know, I don't know whether they have realistic expectations about how long it'll take before those ideas are implemented or, so how do you manage that with idea exchange? I mean, how do you set those expectations for people? Like saying, yeah, we got all these great ideas, but there's only so many people, we can't get to things all of the time, right? Yeah. How, how do you manage those expectations? Yeah, I don't think we've always done a great job of setting expectations, to be honest. Um, and that was really evident last year when one of our oldest community members, his name is Steve Mullis, logged an idea on the Idea Exchange and essentially said, I have some ideas for how you need to improve this thing. And it feels a little bit like a black hole. I'm not sure where my feedback is going. I'm not sure what you're doing with it. I don't know what the expectations are for engagement from the community and from Salesforce on these ideas. And so that idea picked up a lot of steam, got our co-CEO, Mark Benioff's attention, and he basically said, what are we doing here? We had to have a long conversation with ourselves about do we want to continue to invest here? What does that look like? And how do we rebuild trust with our community? And we had to start by saying hard truth, it's broken. Uh, and we need to fix it. We want to reinvest. That's really, really important to us. But we don't necessarily know how to do that. So rather than coming up with our own expectations and setting them with the community, we decided to go ask them for help in deciding what it should look like going forward. So we went out on the road. We did 22 cities. Uh, four continents, nine countries to talk to our community. And we went out with some ideas for Idea Exchange to get very meta. Uh, and we said, here's what we're thinking about doing. What do you think? And what we heard from our community was, we want you to build the things that we want you to build. And we started to look at the Idea Exchange and how it was set up. And logging ideas and voting doesn't really tell us what's most important to the community. So we needed to build a mechanism that would allow them to put their product manager hat on and go through the trade-offs and prioritize what was going to be built in the release. So we decided to build an experience for them to do that. And what was some of that feedback that you got specifically? I mean, what were those ideas that people wanted you to incorporate into ID Exchange? Like those mechanisms to help set those expectations so that they could give you the feedback, they could understand where it's going, Talk me through that, 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 that process. Yeah, so first we had to sort of get over the frustration. We had to get through the you stopped listening and that was really valuable to hear. I would rather a customer be mad at me than not talking to me at all. So it was really great for them to engage with us in that dialogue. And once we got past that, we realized that Idea Exchange wasn't mirroring our product planning process. So ideas are coming in and people are logging comments and adding feedback and the feedback pile is growing but we only do release planning three times a year. And when we make decisions for a release, that's locked, we move to the next one, that gets locked and so on. And we weren't bringing our customers along on that journey with us. So they were sort of saying like, 
we know that you do this thing, but we're not really part of it, and we needed to connect the dots more directly there. So now what we're doing is we open a two-week window every release cycle, so just like our product managers do, and we say to the community, here are the top 10 to 15 ideas from the Idea Exchange. You have a budget, which represents the resources that our engineers have, and you get to allocate your budget to what you're most excited about. And whatever wins that cycle, we call it the prioritization cycle, uh, we will build in our product. And so we gave them that direct line from your feedback through to what we deliver. Uh, and we've been piloting it for the last four releases. We just did it manually before we had the product to support it. And it's been great, it's a great exercise. We tested it, we figured out what worked and didn't work and we're able to fine tune it. So the product we're launching, uh, the new ID Exchange we're launching tomorrow is reflective of all that feedback. So it's, it's kind of not a splashy surprise release. It's a, here's the thing we built together, ready for you to now take out and continue to provide us feedback. And, and was that a difficult process internally? You know, you talk about sometimes it's difficult to sort of take that negative feedback and do something constructive with it. Talk a little bit about that, you know, so that people who are doing that in their own companies maybe can learn from what Salesforce went through during that process. Yeah, I mean, a big piece of advice I would give is don't be afraid of the bad feedback. As I said, I would rather a customer yell and be mad because at least they're engaged in the dialogue than to not have them talk to us at all. If they're talking to somebody else about their problems, then it's, there's no opportunity for us to fix it. So what we did was really try to channel their energy, their frustration into helping us make the solution. So internally, it was, it was a tough couple of months where we felt like, wow, first we let our customers down and that's a yucky feeling. And we have a long road to go, but ultimately for me, it's been my favorite year at Salesforce. I've been at the company for nine years, and it's been awesome to turn the ship from sort of a negative to a positive, and to really see our community be part of that and feel like it's theirs. So I, I would say to anybody who's going through a similar situation, embrace the negative feedback, embrace the frustration, and work through it with your customers, because then they have a more vested interest in being part of the solution and helping you celebrate the new wins. And then during the pilot program, what type of feedback have you gotten from people that are using the new ID Exchange as opposed to you know the old one? What's been their reaction? Yeah, so we, we took it out on the road and I think at first we had to educate people about our product planning process. So we realized there was an education gap. And were they, were they surprised? They were, they were surprised. I think they thought we were just going to fix the voting that they're used to, the site that they were used to. And when we came out and said we actually need something new, they went, oh. Okay, and so once we played it out and we, we tested it with them, I think they really started to see how it made it more of a direct connection from their voice to, to Salesforce. We essentially dedicate part of our roadmap to what they want, really no exceptions. Um, and so that was incredible to watch them. We did see them go through some iterations for a while. We had a price next to every idea, and so you had to pay the price. And then we found customers were saying, well, I, would, I wouldn't leave any money on the table, so I would buy things I didn't even want just to spend all my money. We went, well, that's going to lead us down a road of building things you're not that excited about. So we had to iterate the model based on how they engaged with it. So we joked that we became experts in game theory, trying to figure out how to, how to stay a step ahead of our customers in terms of the ways that they could you know, play with the model or make it work in a way that wouldn't allow the true voice of the community to come through. And that's the entire goal, is to elevate their voice as a community within how we plan Salesforce products. So, yeah. And talk a little bit about, in closing, just sort of customer-centric design when it comes to product services, UI, whatever it is. How important that has been to, you know, sort of developing ID Exchange this entire process of how Salesforce builds products just in general and how, what people doing the same thing in other companies, whether it's in tech or whether it's in um, consumer products or whatever it is, how important that customer-centric process is part of the design. Yeah, so it's, it's amazing to see ideas that come in and then the product that comes out of it. And in a lot of ways, we think of the community around a specific idea as a mini advisory board. Because sometimes they'll log an idea and a product manager will go, okay, you're asking for a faster horse, how do I give you a car? And so it allows for really great dialogue, but our customers have a seat at that table to say, here's how I would use this in practice. Here's how I would use it in the real world to serve my users. And that's become really invaluable to our product managers to feel like they have that input of, here's how I would take this thing you've dreamed up in a lab and apply it to my users. And it allows for changes and modifications. So often we will introduce 
ID Exchange ideas into the product as a beta, and we'll say, play with it, beat it up, and they'll come back and say, I like this, I like that, this didn't quite work for me, and so we'll have some time to fine tune it before it becomes generally available across our product. Um, so it's been great to really see them playing that active role, and it's really part of our DNA. I mean, the ID Exchange is one of the ways we listen, but Every year at the beginning of our fiscal year in January, I take Brett Taylor, our chief product officer, and all of his leadership on the road for something we call Product Roadmap Tour, where we're essentially taking his yearly plan for products to our customers and saying, prioritize it, rank it, take something off, add something that isn't there. We do a series of visionary councils throughout the year where we are bringing our customers, about 20 of them, into a room, and we're saying, let's imagine the future together. And we don't show any slides, we don't talk about Salesforce, we just say, what's the future of the workforce? What's the future of app development? And it allows us to build the future together. So we're always trying to listen in really big and small ways, but make sure our customers stamp every piece of the journey so that when it arrives for them, they go, yeah, I, I see myself in this product. It's, it's built for me. Well, Jenny, thank you very much for coming by no, and okay. talking to you about ID Exchange. I'm excited to see what it looks like, the yeah. new version. Yes, well, come on and check it out. We're going to be launching it tomorrow, and we're super excited. All right. And you can see all of Tech Republic's coverage from June 4th at techrepublic.com.